Have you ever been cheated by a vending machine? It's frustrating. You're thirsty, you're hungry, you go out of your way to find it. You put your money in, you push the button, and nothing happens. First time it's frustrating. Second time it makes you mad. You shake it. You might even hit it if nobody's watching. And by the third or fourth time that same machine takes your money, you're probably going to vow that you'll never go back to that machine. I mean, who would keep going back to a vending machine that doesn't give you what you want? We live in a vending machine society. We've got a microwave mindset. We want what we want when we want it. The problem is that a lot of Christians are like that when it comes to prayer too. We act as if God is simply a vending machine. I think it's because of that type of thinking that a lot of Christians have just quit praying. They've asked God for stuff a lot of times, but they didn't get what they wanted. In fact, some people have asked for so much, for so long, without getting the results that they wanted, that they've just about given up on prayer altogether. Have you ever been disappointed because you didn't get what you prayed for? And just like that vending machine, maybe you've taken time out of your day, you've put your prayers in, you've made your request, only to have nothing happen. Well, let me encourage you. I want you to hear me out because prayer can be powerful. It's how we relate to God. But we have to take the time to really understand it. Obviously, God is not a vending machine. You know that. But wouldn't you agree that about the only time that most people go to Him in prayer is when they want something? If you don't believe me, try this. Try to pray for one week without asking for anything. I think that you'll find out that about the only time we go to God in prayer is when we're asking for something. With that in mind, you can probably see how easy it is to apply the vending machine mindset towards God. And if we're not careful, we won't have any type of real relationship with Him at all. Now not only is God not a vending machine, but the Bible says this in Colossians 1.16, For by Him, God, all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, both visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created through Him and for Him. Did you catch that? We were created for God, not the other way around. I think that one of the secrets to understanding prayer better is to understand the character of God. Now John 3.16 is a verse that a lot of people know. But listen to it again. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever would believe on Him could have everlasting life in heaven. Now everybody knows the verse, but did you really catch what that was saying? Jesus died for us. He gave everything for us. He didn't have to do that. Now ask yourself, because we're talking about the character of God, does that sound like a God who wants to withhold good from us? Wait, it gets even better. 2 Corinthians 6.18 says that He will become a father to us. God wants to become a father to us. Wow! Think about what the Bible is saying. If we believe that Jesus is God's Son and we ask Him to forgive us for our sins, He says that He will adopt us into His family. So, if you don't want to treat God like a vending machine and you understand that His character shows that He's loving and caring and giving, then you might be asking yourself, then why don't I get what I asked for? And that's a good question. So here's a clue. We should view God not like a vending machine, but like our Heavenly Father. John 1.12 says, To all that received Him, that would be Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, to those who believe in Jesus, gave He the power to become the sons of God. We get to be the children of God. Now, with that idea in mind, Think about God being your parent. Uh, okay, not necessarily like your parents because God, He's the perfect parent. But, just like with any good parent, He can't give His kids everything they ask for. Okay, let's say that your five-year-old daughter wants a beautiful pearl necklace. Are you going to give her a real one? I doubt it. 
you're going to give her one that's appropriate for her age. And God's like that with us. He knows what's best for us. He wants to give us good gifts, but He also knows that we can't see the future. And even though we think we know what's best for us, sometimes we're mistaken. We can't always see the big picture like He can. But I can tell you this, you can trust Him. If you study His Word and you look at His character, you'll learn that you can trust Him. I realize that prayer can be a complicated subject. That's the reason I wrote Secrets to Meaningful Prayer to try to untangle some of the mystery surrounding prayer. And there's no way that I can answer all of the questions that you might have about prayer in a short video like this, but if I've caught your attention and you want to learn more, invest in the book. But for now, let's remember what we talked about, the character of God. He sent His Son to die for your sins. He said that He would adopt you into His family and He wants to take care of you. He loves you unconditionally. God wants to be your Heavenly Father, not your sugar daddy. And we need to spend more time learning to communicate with Him and less time just talking at Him.